Well, the Senate has its health care bill that's trying to work out. The House has its plan. And as the debate continues, those two proposals for reform seem to be maybe getting further and further apart. So most of you out there probably couldn't tell me the difference between the two right now if you had to. But that's why we got Kenneth Thorpe here. He's a health care policy expert, worked for the Clinton administration on its health care reform efforts. He has, has joined us uh, over this whole health care debate, and he joins us again this morning. My goodness, I can't even remember where we were the first time we actually started talking about this stuff. But we've come uh, so much further. Uh, are, are they getting there? In the Senate, let's forget about the House for a second. But are they getting to a point now in the Senate with that legislation that they think they'll be able, Democrats at least, to get those 60 votes they're talking about? I think they're getting there. The key is to get the 60 votes. Mm -hmm. It's like a Rubik's cube. You have to move different parts around mm -hmm. to get different combinations of senators. And the the, com the things that are in play right now is a, a new proposal to allow adults to buy into the Medicare program at age 55. And I think there's a growing agreement on what the public option would look like. So I think that despite the fact that they're, you know, slowing down a little bit, they're waiting for the Congressional Budget Office to give them estimates, which has sort of bogged the uh, timing down. Yeah. But they're moving along, and I think they're making progress. Well, uh, for a lot of people, a lot of Americans watching this thing, it seems like hey, we, we call it progress, but progress is only to get to 60 votes. The, the legislation itself is so far, it seems, away from what the original goal was, and to be real reform. It sounds like they're just willing to make any kind of deal they have to to just say we pass health care reform legislation. Well, I mean, the good news is that the core elements of the plan are still there. Okay. Moving to universal coverage. All the insurance reforms to make sure that insurance companies can't deny you coverage, can't eliminate your coverage if you're sick. The core of the proposal is there. The debate that's been going on is about the public option, what form will it take, and what trade-offs can you make uh, among Senate Democrats uh, to get a public option in there that's really digestible to 60 members of the Senate. Yeah, how close are they to that 60 as you see? I know you, you do a lot of number counting them. You've been a part of these things before, so how close are they getting? But it seems like every time they make a little change and pick up one or two senators here, then they're losing a couple of others on the other side. And that's what Senator Reid, the majority leader, has been trying to do. I think he's been doing a masterful job of trying to keep uh, that coalition together. Uh, the two roadblocks we face right now is, one, we're waiting for the Congressional Budget Office to come back with estimates on how much the plan costs. So senators are not going to commit until they really see the CBO estimates of this and exactly what's in the legislation. And two, uh, the trade-off between a public option, which looks like it'll be now administered by a not-for-profit private plan nationally, uh, and this Medicare buy-in. So those are two big pieces that uh, they need to still figure out. On this public option now, again, it seems like they keep molding and shaping this thing and keep calling it something different to try to get the votes they need. To, 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 uh, to a common, just a, the lay person out there watching this, what is, does this still look like a public option? I mean, we hear about public option, been hearing that forever, but the one they are now looking at, how close is that to resembling the public option we all thought we knew? <laughs> I think it's it's close. I mean, the idea is that there'd be one, you know, one or more plans nationally, so that everybody pays the same premium. If I live in Albuquerque, I live in Indiana, Pennsylvania, I pay the same premium. It's just that it'd be administered by a private, not-for-profit health plan. Do you find uh, now uh, starting to, to to hear a little bit, a little momentum as far as some of the legislators, some of the Democrats, even in the House now? People are slowly but surely starting to back away on their language about saying, well, it must have a public option, maybe moving towards saying, well, as long as it does the same thing as a public option. Do, do, you, do you see now that some momentum going towards there? It's kind of just stepping away from that, that term, public option. now. I, I think so. I think everybody recognizes that they are so close to patching, mm -hmm. passing a major, major piece of health reform legislation that would have enormous implications immediately for Americans. You know, 60 days, 90 days after this is passed, there would be a national plan available for people to buy uh, and uh, based on no pre-existing conditions. So that plan would be available day one, and that's an important improvement for Americans. Well, Ken Thorpe, we appreciate having you. We don't know what we do without you. Uh, we appreciate you as always coming in. We'll continue to talk about this thing.